F4WOnline.com slash Vegas. Mm -hmm. That is F4WOnline.com slash Vegas. The annual convention is coming to, yes, Las Vegas. (gasps) It is taking place over Double or Nothing weekend. And Double or Nothing has now been confirmed for that weekend. The weekend of May 24 through 27, 2024 in Las Vegas. And we are going to be there. Who is we? Well, no Dave this year. But I will be there. Vinny will be there. Yes, sir. Uh, JJ here says he's going to be there on the chat. Our old friend JJ. A lot of people are going to be there. And we've got a lot of events. And if you're thinking of going to Vegas for the convention, you should go. It's awesome. We have people that went to the convention in like 2006. And they have made friends for life. That they are still friends with today. You're going to have a good time. You're in Vegas. You're hanging out with people from this site. Everybody hangs out together, has a great time. It's like it's pretty much impossible to not have a good time. I think there was once a guy who didn't have a good time. That's the rumor. But uh, in general, you know, aside from that guy, everyone's always had a great time. Here is the full schedule of events at 4wonline.com slash Vegas. Friday, May 24th, we have the F4W Dinner, Texas Day, Brazil. All-you-can-eat steak, sodas, tea, and dessert. You have to buy your own alcohol for this one. But that is, that's my highlight, to be honest. Then Saturday, May 25th, uh, there is a meet and greet with Vinny and I, Mm -hmm. followed by, it says a live Q&A, but you know what it is, everybody? It's a live Brian and Vinny show. We'll answer your questions. We can do a Q&A. We can talk about old wrestling. We can talk about stuff we reviewed in the past. You can ask Vinny questions about whatever. Same with me. And uh, and by the way, yes, there are pork chops at uh, Texas Day Brazil. How I about can that? Confirm, yes. Yeah. But this, this is going to be a lot of fun, this Q&A. We've got uh, Ed's Pote Air Show on May 25th, Saturday as well. Mm-hmm. And then in the evening, there will be an F4W Sweet Party which Vinny and I will also be making an appearance at. Mm -hmm. Sunday, there's the F4W brunch at the Wicked Spoon in the Cosmo. And uh, tickets for all of these events are limited. And we have added something very special. If you do want to go to everything, if you would like to go to the Q&A, the meet and greet, and also sit in our section with Vinny and I at Double or Nothing, you can get a combo pack, and there's only a few left. So if you want that, you got to go like ASAP. A double or nothing ticket, the meet and greet, and the Q&A with Vinny and I. It's a special package. There's only a few left. We also have packages, the meet and greet, the Q&A, and the wrestling show, Ed's wrestling show. And, of course, tickets for the Texas Day Brazil dinner, sweet party, and the brunch. So I recommend you guys go. I've always had a fun time. It's probably my favorite time of year pretty much every year. Bro, if Vinny yeah. if Vinny has a good time. Yes. I'm happy. You'll see if you go, yes. you'll see me smiling and being yeah. friendly. How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, New Pacific, 3 Eastern, and Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Saturday mornings with Jim Valley, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 Eastern. Sunday, it's with Andrew Zarian. And hey, it's Tuesday of WrestleMania weekend here on this show. And you know what that means? The Go Home NXT for Stand and Deliver taking place tonight. We got the lineup for the show. 
Dynamite tomorrow. Bunch of stuff happening on that show. We'll give you the lineup for that as well. We have the full lineup and match order, at least as of a couple of days ago, for WrestleMania. Match order can always change. I mean, these things happen all the time. But uh, we have what is expected to be the uh, match order for the show. I've also got a big announcement about this weekend. If you want some wrestling coverage, have I got a place for you? We'll tell you about that here today. Yeah, we can talk about CM Punk. And here's what I'm going to do. Here's the text message number. 425-780-7566. That is 425-780-7566. Start texting me your questions right now. I don't think we need to recap the entire thing. We did it on Wrestling Observer Radio. We talked a lot about it. If you still have questions, if you want anything clarified, then text me. 425-780-7566. And we'll talk about that interview here today. We've also got AEW Cuts, which, uh, you know, there's a lot to this. People make a big deal out of everything. And we'll tell you, uh, we'll tell you what's going on. And uh, also what I think is going on. And, of course, we've got Clash of the Castle announced and ratings, if we want to talk about those. And, of course, the Go Home Raw for WrestleMania, which took place on Monday night. So a lot to get into here today. Only an hour to do so. So we're going to uh, kick it off after the break. Wrestling Observer Live. And to you, Mr. Khan. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Khan. You're welcome. Thank you for believing in someone who left a guaranteed spotlight for something new. Someone who isn't always perfect, isn't always kind, but who was always determined to do her best. Renee Paquette. Thank you. And as for what's next, Anthony, come on, let's spoil your little surprise. Come on, I'm sick of alluding to her. Come on, I am sick of the cryptic hints, aren't we all? I don't care if it's a big business, I don't care if it's next week. Wendy Richter? I am going to fuck you up. And to anyone else who wants my title, you can fuck off. There's a ranking system now and you can bloody well use it. All right, thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, any questions from the media? Uh, tread lightly. And make it quick because if I don't leave soon, there's going to be piss all over the seat. <laughs> so, if you could. Um, Lyric Swinton, SNME Radio, you talked about the ranking system for your title. Um, how do you feel about your protege's um, current ranking on those rankings, Mariah May? I think she's doing just fine. Um, she's, she's doing great. I'm, I'm very proud, doing a great job, but she's not quite ready. So, um, let's not confuse her with those kinds of questions. Okay. Anyone else? Hi, Tony. So, as you alluded to before, Mariah May is obviously dressed as an older version of your character. So, was that your idea? Was that her idea? Ideas. Ideas. I said, didn't I? I said to Diana, I would give her the old Tony Storm and so much more. And here it is. Look at her. Look at her. Fantastic. Anyone else? Ideas come from so many places. Yes. Tony Stumeyer, from Sports Guys Talking Wrestling. Have you talked to Susan Tex Green lately? No. Next question. <laughs> I believe we're done here this evening. Well, thank you, champ. Are we ready to get fucked up or what? Huh? <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. Thank you, sir. Come here, bring it in, big man. I'm so, I love you. I love you. You're doing a fantastic job. In six to eight years, you're going to really blossom. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, darlings. Thanks, Jeff. Be good. Thank you very much. Stay safe. <coughs>
Yes, we're back here on the show. Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Hi, Brian. Mike Simper, VB, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Hey, uh, first I want to mention that uh, WrestleMania is this weekend, and my uh, my family's going on uh, spring break early. Uh, spring break for the kids, it's next week. And so uh, my wife and two daughters are leaving Friday morning. I'm going to catch up with them after WrestleMania. And that means I got nothing to do all weekend but watch wrestling. And so uh, Vinny... Why don't you pick up around there, for God's sake? Vinny is basically kind of moving in Saturday morning. <laughs> and uh, we're just going to watch wrestling, brother. If you want some wrestling coverage, have I got the place for you. WrestlingObserver.com, video.f4wonline.com. For sure, uh, we're going to have a members-only Brian and Vinny show Friday and Saturday. I'm sorry, Saturday and Sunday. A members-only Observer Radio with Dave, Saturday and Sunday. I may be doing a solo show Friday night. That is my plan. I'm going to uh, probably watch the Arena Mexico main event and uh, maybe Ring of Honor, uh, the pay-per-view. Uh, that's Friday, right? Is that Friday? Yes, I think it it's is. Friday, yeah. And then uh, Saturday, uh, man, what is there? I mean, I think a there's lot. a blo- I think Bloodsport <laughs> is actually Friday afternoon. I'm going to try and watch that. And then, uh, s- let's see, Saturday, uh, is that NXT or is that Sunday? Saturday, of course, is WrestleMania, so we'll be talking about that. But uh, anyway, there's a possibility that Vinny and I may do multiple shows over the weekend. I can't promise anything, but, you know, we've we got a lot to cover. It is going to be a very, very busy weekend. And if you are not a subscriber, well, have I got a, an idea for you? Sign up because we're going to be covering all of it uh, this weekend. So that is the lineup. There's going to be a lot. There is indeed. Now, we what, do have the... What uh, talking about NXT? NXT is on... I believe it's on Sunday morning, is it not? Is it Sunday morning? All right, It well. is the, the 6th. What day is the 6th here? Yes, no. uh, Ring of Honor is Friday. Uh, we can confirm that. Uh, but anyway, I should mention this as well. And that is, we have the lineup for WrestleMania. And let me make this clear, because I mean this in the nicest way possible. People are stupid. This, as of a couple of days ago, was the match order, okay? Now, Triple H did an interview a couple of days ago and noted that they are all about shifting if need be. And, in fact, they did shift earlier this year when it was going to be the Rock and Roman Reigns at WrestleMania, and they got such a backlash that weekend that they shifted back to what they're doing now, which, by the way, I mean, it's going to be two big WrestleManias with that tag match and then the uh, the main event Sunday. So as of a couple of days ago, this was the match order. It could change. If it changes on Sunday, I don't want to hear about it, how we were wrong, because this was the match order. Night one, opener, Rhea Ripley and Becky Lynch. Becky, in fact, has done interviews saying she wants to work the opener, and it looks like she will be the opener on night one. That will be followed by the six-pack ladder match with Judgment Day, DIY, New Day, Awesome Truth, New Catch Republic, and A-Town Down. Third match, Rey Mysterio and Dragon Lee versus Santos Escobar and Dominic Mysterio. That will be followed by Jimmy and Jay. And then it's Jade Cargill, Bianca, and Naomi versus Damage Control. Intercontinental Champion Gunther versus Sami Zayn. And then the Rock and Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins. That is the main event of night one. Night two opens up with Seth Rollins versus Drew McIntyre for the World Heavyweight title. That will be followed by the Philadelphia Street Fight. Lashley and the Street Profits versus the Final Testament. L.A. Knight versus A.J. Styles up third. Logan Paul versus Randy Orton and Kevin Owens fourth. Fifth match on the show, EO Sky versus Bailey, And the main event, obviously, is Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes. So night one of WrestleMania is at uh, seven matches. And night two is at six matches. Could be something added. But we also have to presume that in this three and a half hours or so, we're probably going to have musical performance, 
we'll have special appearance, Stone Cold Steve Austin, John Cena, whatever they're going to do with those guys. And I think it is safe to say that you can expect the main event both nights to put in a lot of time. I would bet 40, 45 minutes blocked off for both of those matches. And that's just for the entrances. Well, that includes probably entrances and the match itself and, and everything like that. So that is your WrestleMania lineup for the two nights of the show. Tonight is the Go Home NXT, and we have got Trick and Carmelo face-to-face. We have got Joaquin Wilde and Cruz Del Toro versus Axiom and Nathan Frazier versus Gallows and Anderson. NXT Tag Team Title Number 1 Contenders Match. Winner gets a shot at Braun and Baron this weekend. Lyra versus Roxanne Perez. I'm sorry, Lyra and Roxanne in Supernova Sessions. <laughs> that could be something else. Sol Ruka versus Blair Davenport. Fallon Henley versus J.C. Jane. Oba Femi versus Joe Gacy. Carmen Petrovich versus Lola Vice. And Natalia will be there, by the way, with Carmen. And then, yes, the feud that will never end. Von Wagner and Lexus King. Oh. Yes. Tomorrow is Dynamite. Wooster. I really Wooster. screwed that one up. <laughs> Samoa Joe and Swerve have their contract signing. The Young Bucks versus the Best Friends Tag Team Tournament Semifinal. Mariah May versus Thunder Rosa in a number one contenders match. Will Ospreay versus Powerhouse Hobbs. Billy Gunn versus Jay White. And Chris Jericho will call out Hook. So dumb. And then last night we finished the show, and I was—I just looked at the chat after the show was off the air, and uh, we had just run down all the lineups and everything. And uh, our old buddy Lenny was like, stacked lineup for Rampage. And I was like, it is? What did I even read? And I went back, and it's Malachi Black versus Chris Daniels. That's the only thing we've got. <laughs> Would not call that a stacked lineup for Rampage. No. Love Chris Daniels and everything, but what? That was a rando match. SmackDown this coming Friday. The Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Jey Uso versus Solo Sokoa. Pete Dunne and Tyler Bate versus Grayson Waller and Austin Theory. Zelina Vega and Electra Lopez one-on-one. Oh, my. And the KO Show with Kevin Owens and Randy Orton. By the way, it's A Town Down Under. You got to get that. Right. I'm sorry. Super Card of Honor on Friday. Eddie Kingston, Mark Briscoe for the Ring of Honor title. Mark Briscoe doesn't win that. I just quit. There's going to be no Do more WrestleMania the right coverage. Thing, really. Athena Lies versus Akaru Shida for the women's title. Kyle Fletcher versus Lee Johnson for the TV title. Queen Aminata versus Billy Starks for the TV title. It's a tournament final. We need a new belt. Uh, Dalton Castle without the boys, they've been fired, versus Johnny TV in a fight without honor. And it is dishonorable to have fired the boys prior to this Friday. Mina Shirakawa, Micah, and May Sarah versus Azumi, Tam Nakano, and Saya Kamatani. Then we got Stan and Deliver, which is Elia versus Tony D for the NXT title. Lyra versus Roxanne for the women's title. Oba Femi versus Dijak and Josh Briggs in a Haas match for the North American title. Braun and Corbin versus the tournament winners. And in the main event, in a match with no stipulations, nothing on the line, it's just a match. Well, that'll be Trick Williams and Carmelo Hayes. No gimmicks needed, just fists. Yeah. They should have put a gimmick on it. You're right. Well, they I mean, should've. they got tonight. I almost swore I was so uh, <laughs> outraged. But those are the uh, the big shows, and there are many, many, many shows over WrestleMania weekend. And, in fact, yesterday on the Filthy Tom Lawler show, Filthy Ford Daily, Tom and I basically ran down as many shows as we could for this weekend. So if you're a subscriber, you can go up and listen to that at the end of the show. And that's it. When we come back, CM Punk and the rest of the news. Wrestling Observer Live. Corey Lee, but the Wrestling Observer, um, how's your back? Because uh, you... Mate, my ass is so bad. <laughs> Can I show, like, a little bit of it? Like, I won't show... You want to show more of that? I'm not going to show you my cheek, right? But, like, bro, look how bad that is. Oh, my God. Yeah, that, 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 that spot was pretty insane. That so yeah. much. I want to make sure that you're okay, obviously. Uh, the second question I actually had is kind of your mindset now. 
you are now a full-time U.S.-based wrestler, which is, you, you've never done that. You've basically, you've done, obviously, the Indies in England, Japan. I mean, you've done matches over like, here. Yeah, just dip my toes into it. Yeah, but now you're actually going to be going on American TV every week. Mm -hmm. What is your mindset about how you kind of almost have, do you have to change your style, or are you just going to be like, you know what, I'm going to be Will Osprey, and I, I'm going to make the basically the TV adapt to me? I mean, the one thing I'm doing my best to do is I'm trying my best not to swear. Like, oh, that is so hard. It's well, like, here you can. You feel free to no, no, off the air. I mean, here, yeah. That's, yeah. Oh, FCC. Oh, is yeah. But, like, <laughs> but I was just kind of like, mate, like, even, like, cutting promos now, like, that, that's, like, a real hard task for me to do because I've never done it, like, into an American audience. A lot of our stuff in Japan was always backstage. So, like, I, I knew when I wanted to make the jump, I was, like, really, I'm really trying hard at that and really trying, like, to learn that style because I'm all new at this. Like everything that you see right in front of you is all gonna be like me experiencing something completely new. But like my mindset right now is like, I have been screaming down the lens of a Jap Japanese camera that I am the best in the world. And right now I've never done this. I've never been full time in America. Uh, and it's, it's a lot of things, but it's mainly an anxiety. It's an anxiety of like for ages. Like I know when the bell rings, like I, I can do it, but like, it's not just the bell ringing anymore. It's about showing personality. It's about connecting with the crowds, and like that's my main focus now. Is just, just like I want to show my personality because I'm a thing. I'm a little bit of a cheeky bugger, so like I like to I like to show that off. And like this is gonna be like a, a really rough road, not rough road, but it's gonna be like it's gonna be hard to like work out these navigations. But like I'm ready, man. Like I'm ready to do it. I'm ready to be completely vulnerable out there. And just like if, if I mess up, I shut you up to me. Like, I, I don't mind. Like. I'm here to learn, and like I'm not I'm not going to get it out right away, but like, but like I'm doing my best, and I think like honestly out there today, I think if that's the the first thing that I've got, like <laughs> everyone's fucked, eh? <laughs> <laughs>
come on. That's not reality, okay? I've had a lot of bad things happen to me, and yes, they are everyone else's fault, but it's an exception right there. I understand CM Punk a lot better than he thinks I do for a lot of reasons, but I watched it, and that's 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 largely what I got out of it. And, I mean, you have any questions? Where do you even begin? I... I would love to see some of the questions that you got. I am, I'll just say that once again, I don't, the more of this gets talked about, I still continue to feel the same way, which is nobody looked good in any of this. Everybody kind of got what they deserved, whether it be good or bad or a little of both out of it, whether that be CM Punk, whether that be people on the other side, whether that be Jack Perry, whether that be the wrestling media. It just, it is a story that has taken on a life of its own that seemingly now will never go away. And every time it's brought back up, nobody looks good, not the least of which is Tony Khan. So that's my feelings on it. We don't have to go over it. I'm not going over an hour and 50. I'm not going over an hour and 50 minutes. I mean, if you want, it's on Observer Radio last night. But I will say one thing that kind of ties into this, and I'll go to the questions. So, yes, this does tie into it, I believe, but not in the way people are probably thinking. AW did a bunch of cuts yesterday, and they released Dasha, Stu Grayson, Jose the Assistant, Jora Joel, Gravity, Slim J, Parker Boudreaux. Also, the boys, uh, you know, uh, from Ring of Honor, and the Anthony case. Anthony Henry, all released. And, you know, there was a question on the chat like, you think this this was done to kind of take attention? No, not at all. But here's how it ties in. You know, one of the things that, uh, you know, CM Punk said a lot about AEW, and he said a lot about Tony Khan. And one of the things that, uh, you know, whatever you think about CM Punk, and, you know, there are people in AEW that are not fans of CM Punk at all, especially after yesterday. But they made that clear to him the entire time he was there. But a lot of people and that are not everybody else, frankly, a lot of people that are not fans of CM Punk would agree with him that one of the issues with AEW is Tony wants to be everyone's friend and he is a nice guy. And that is true. And he does not like to be involved in conflict. And that has caused so many problems and i bring up the roster cuts because about a week ago two weeks ago somewhere around there this from wrestlingobserver.com aw has officially announced the hiring of a new chief operating officer in addition to the responsibilities of the role kosha irby first reported in january 2024 as reported by fightful aw continue to fill roles open by the departure of other employees like former Bright, uh, Vice President, Chief Marketing Officer Rafael Morphy, and former Chief Marketing Merchandise Officer Dana Massey. Irby is the first named COO in AEW history as the company builds out a C-suite, in addition to new vice presidents like Jennifer Pepperman, who was brought on last month as their VP of Content Development. And by the way, these two names, Jennifer Pepperman and... Uh, Kosha Irby, both background in WWE. And I was told yesterday that one of the jobs of the COO is to do what happened yesterday. People are going to get released. And, you know, Tony Khan, I don't like to listen. I want to make it clear. I don't like to see anybody get released. I don't like to see anybody lose their job. But there are so many people under contract with AEW. I had absolutely no idea that Slim J. And, you know, some of these people were working, you know, for Ring of Honor or whatever. But I saw some of these names. I was like, Parker Boudreaux is still under contract? That guy hasn't been used. Like, it's like the Lanny Poffo deal in, in WCW. He was signed for like three years, never appeared on TV. And, you know, there's there's too many people. And what Tony needs is a bad cop. I hate to use the name John Laurinaitis because whatever, but that was John Laurinaitis' job. That was Jim Ross's job. 
Vince always had a you bad cop. You need a vice president of player personnel. You, have, you, you need somebody who's going to say you're fired. And then people go, man, Tony loved me. But that damn Kosha Irby, mm-hmm. if it weren't for him, you know, the same thing happened in WWE. And, and that's what happened. And that was one of CM Punk's complaints that I have heard voiced from so many people. And, you know, the the we've talked about it a million times. But the whole deal that actually led to the departure of CM Punk, the whole situation with Jungle Boy and the car and All In and the collision show, you know, Punk gave his side of the story. And, of course, it's going to be his side of the story. But the crux of the issue that I brought up multiple times and this is also one of the things that kind of bother me about Punk's interviews is he's, he's trying to be honest here. So when the whole thing with Jungle Boy went down, the whole collision story, CM Punk at the time, at the time, believed that what Jungle Boy was trying to do with the car and the glass and everything was find a way to not have to go to work. Okay get hurt, get scratched up, get cut up, whatever. And when I asked people about what happened in AEW, their response was, of all the people in the company, to claim is trying to find a way to not go to work. You chose the guy who did more matches and worked more shows than anybody. If you want to say that somebody's trying to avoid going to work, like there's plenty of people, you but you cannot say that about Jungle Boy. But Brian, and, you, well, hold on. Go ahead. Jungle Boy, CM Punk in the interview yesterday goes, I didn't know that he had a vacation planned. Fine, I believe you. You didn't know at the time that he had a vacation planned. But the fact is, he did have a vacation planned. And as he's doing the interview with Ariel, he's still acting like, he thinks that Jack was doing all of this to try to avoid going to work, even though you've now admitted that you know that he was doing it because he had a vacation planned. So here's the deal. Jungle Boy was told to rent a car. Punk said, I don't want to beat up a rental car. Fine, whatever, okay? Like, you know, it's happened before, whatever. But Punk says, I don't want a rental car being destroyed. And then Jungle Boy got in an argument with Tony Schiavone or whoever. Punk had the whole nine yards. Okay, where was Tony Khan? Yeah. I don't care what Jungle Boy wanted to do. I don't even care what the doctor said he should or should not do, or Tony Schiavone, or CM Punk. Where was Tony Khan? Boy, this gets said a lot. This is one example. This has happened over and over and over again when there are issues. Where is Tony Khan? The answer is, Tony Khan, I don't know where he was, but what I do know is he was trying to avoid conflict. It was the same thing when Jungle Boy said his deal at Wembley, and CM Punk says, I went up to Tony Khan And I said, do something about this. And Tony Khan's response was, well, what do you want me to do? Okay. Now, whatever you want to say about CM Punk's, you know, I'm being honest. This is my thoughts, whatever. I mean, okay, fine. Tony Khan doesn't want to be involved with conflict. That doesn't mean that you need to take advantage of that. And that is one of the issues with AEW. And that is that Tony is a nice guy. He doesn't want to be involved in conflict. And some people take advantage of that. And we'll get to that after the break. Wrestling Observer Live. Um, Scrolling Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it. They're saying this was the match of the year. You with the catch. How are you feeling? Your first official match at AGW. They're already calling it match of the year. How are you feeling? I mean, I've got a lot to top now, haven't I? Like, I mean, look, once again, like, I, I can't do those type of matches without a great, like, 
partner to do it with. Takeshita is every bit as good as Will Ospreay. It's just on that night, I was just better, pure and simple. But like, look at the move that I had to put him away with. Uh, the Tiger Driver, I keep saying this so much, man. The Tiger Driver 91 is the most dangerous move in wrestling. It is not, it, it was used back in the day by Mr. Haru Masawa. And I said it right, didn't I? I'm yep. sure I did. But like, <laughs> I'm actually sure forgot that wrong, didn't I? Be like, <laughs> but like, it was one of the most dangerous moves in wrestling. And like, some guys like some guys are able to like kind of figure out a way of getting out of it. But like, it's a complete pressure on your neck, man. It is. Just, it's a sheer drop. Like, I, I wouldn't be surprised in like the five months time, like people will be like, hey, you can't do that move anymore. But just like. This is what I bring to the table, man. Like, I'm one of the most dangerous professional wrestlers in the world. Look, I am a lovely man. I, I will walk your mum across the street any day of the week. I will happily give you a cuddle if you're ever feeling sad. I, I'm always a good shoulder to cry on, and I look after you to the day I die. But I am one mean motherfucker when I want to be. Like, that's all I care about, man. So, like, if this is... So, this is the first pay-per-view of AEW's year for 2024. Right, so we got Dynasty, probably got Forbidden Door, we've got uh, Double, all in, nothing. Double Nothing, All In, All Out, uh, Full Gear, no, Wrestle Dream, Full Gear, and World's End. Yeah. Yeah. That's, That's the first well. one. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Like I said, the most dangerous man in wrestling right now, bro. Yes, sir. Uh, D Dowdy, uh, 104.5 FM, WCCG. Uh, Will, question for you. Um, throughout the match, there were a lot of aha moments, a lot of momentum shifting. How were you able to stay focused and adapt to, to catch this offense? Uh, a lot of it has just been like uh, experience over in Japan, dude. Like, I mean, once again, I, I have watched Takeshi, like I was a fan of him. I saw him live at 2019. And uh, one of my mates at the time went, God damn, he's sexy. <laughs> so I was sitting next to him, I was just like, hey, you, you're all right, calm down, mate. But, yeah, he is, isn't he? But uh, it, when it, well, those type of matches are happening, like I just kind of like remain uh, for my training what I did in Japan because with that, it's, it's endurance space. You have to keep your timing right, you have to keep your energy levels down. Like not get too freaked out in those moments because like there's a lot of like heavy shots. So the moment you start freaking out and breathing heavy and like not... Uh, not uh, creating space from your opponent, that's when you're gonna find yourself in like difficult positions, bless you. Uh, but for me, like, it, it's not a, a rodeo, uh, it's not a ride that I haven't ridden before. Uh, I'm very much aware of like my, um, I think my benefit throughout a lot of these guys is um, my my gas is kind of good, uh, uh, my breathing, like my cardio, that's what I can't even think. You see, he did a lot of brain damage there, boom, and I'm like, <laughs> You know, I see a few people bring up, yeah, Tony wasn't a good boss. Well, hold on a second. What do you mean by not a good boss? There's a lot of people that work for AEW that think he's a great boss because he's a really nice guy and he tries to go out of his way to make life great for the people that works for him. However, this is the point, and I've had people there bring this exact thing up to me. Because Tony is such a nice guy, and he wants to just be nice to everybody, what happens is it brings out the worst in everybody. And if you look at certain people, I won't mention any names, that have, that have had issues here or there in wrestling, well, what happens when they go to AEW? Those issues are amplified because they're taking advantage of the fact that he's a nice guy. Now, CM Punk talked about his side of the story with Hangman Page. Talked about his side of the story with Jack Perry. I'm sure in his mind, he believes that he was wronged in both of these situations. However, this is actually what he said. When the issue happened with Hangman Page, and he said that he and Hangman had agreed on a bunch of things to talk about, and Hangman went out there, and he not just didn't just talk about workers' rights, but he said everything, nothing Hangman said he claimed had been agreed upon beforehand. And so everything that he was going to say, he couldn't just say because it wouldn't make any sense based on what Hangman said. He said he couldn't even hear Hangman, so he had to try and listen to do their back and forth. 
And he said that he was a professional because he did not double leg and kill hangman. That's what he said. He was a professional because he did not double leg him and kill him. In the Jack Perry situation, Jack Perry said something that he didn't like. CM Punk said, I was a professional. I didn't hit him. I only choked him a little bit. That's what he said. Now, there were multiple witnesses to that, and none of the witnesses said there was a choke. They said it was more like a front face lock type deal. But the point is, whatever it was, it doesn't matter. So he guillotined him. He What's said. His, why don't you just say that? Okay. No, front they didn't even say guillotine. guillotine. They said it was like a front headlock oh, type deal. God. No, it doesn't matter. The point is, <laughs> his line God. was, I was a professional. I didn't hit him. I only choked him a little bit. Bro, if you have problems with the way things are being run, do we have to always go to a 10? Did he also not say that? Do we have to escalate it all the way to 10? Hold on. Hold on. In this, let's take this particular case. In this case, this is what he said. This does not seem to be contradicted anywhere. I I could be wrong. You tell me if my memory is, is not here. But Jungle Boy came up to him. And said, well, do something about it. And got close to him. I'm sure Punk did not mind. Well, actually, Mike, close this has him. been. This has been. Okay. Because. Now, from what side here? Because, again, we have two sides. I'll tell you what side. can't even agree what happened as far as these guys getting together physically. There, there was security camera footage of the incident. And they had a group of people looking at it, including Brian Danielson who is a friend of CM Punk, and Brian Danielson saw it, and his recommendation was, guy's got to be fired. That that does not explain that, Brian. He, Punk, did put his hands on Perry, but again, if Perry's coming to him and saying, you know, all right, what's up? You know, if you want to go, you want to make a move, do it. Okay, and Punk put his hands on him. That's why he was fired. That's how I took that. Doesn't mean that that conflict wasn't exactly the way that he said that it was. Well, there were multiple witnesses who did not see it exactly the way that CM Punk did. And, you know, he he you mentioned... Know, that's the problem with all of this. It's a lack of institutional control. And I'm... maybe that's changing with the people that are there, but that's what this is. And that's what it's been. It's been a lack of structure. You skipped over when it came to a lot of that story with Jack Perry about the fact that this is what Punk is claiming. Tony Schiavone came up to him, who is a producer who has had a long time in this business and has done a lot, came up to Punk to ask him to intervene after Perry had not only, this is what Punk says now, cursed out Schiavone, cursed out one of the producers, cursed out several people, including the doctor about it. Tony Khan is there. So then they come instead to Tony Khan to CM Punk because it's his show. He's got control of that show. Okay. So then he says it. Like, again, who told him to get the car? Who told him to get a rental instead of getting a wreck if this was going to be something they were going to do? It's like, this guy's got a show going on, has no idea what's taking place because nobody knows. The left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. How can you function this way? And this has been a common theme throughout this promotion. And Tony Khan is a nice guy. He seems to be a great guy. But this, all of this goes back to one person. And there are no clean hands on both sides of these things, no matter how much everybody wants to say it was the other side or that wasn't the story or I heard this. It is such a joke. It's an absolute joke. So let's uh, do a couple of these text messages here because uh, there's a lot of them. If I could find the right button right here. (laughs) Hey, listen, give me some time, brother. (laughs) All right. Let's see. Are you going to be okay while she's gone? Yeah. You know where everything is in that All right. This person here, (laughs) and this is a great question that I don't have an answer for. And it's actually, it's another one of those things in the interview. Um, He says, what's Punk's play? By trying to insinuate his tricep injury happened in the backstage brawl and not the match. 
pretty easily verified it happened during the match. He even looks at the injury and compares it to his good arm during the scrum. Just seems very petty at best. He didn't flat out say that the injury happened during the brawl and not the match. But uh, he was asked, like, did that happen during the brawl? And he just goes. And the fact of the matter is, it happened during the match. I mean, it happened during the match. It could have been made worse during the brawl, surely. It's It's possible it was made worse during the brawl. But, I mean, he, you know. Talk to the referee during the match. You can see, like, all of this. He was there at the scrum. He was looking at his arm. He was hurting. I mean, I don't know why he's trying to insinuate that it happened during the brawl. But um, it didn't. So, I don't know. I can't answer that question for you. Any word on reaction for people inside AEW? Well, I mean, just disappointed. I mean, he painted AEW as not a business, a clown show, an idiot running it not making money. I mean, and the feeling there is you realize that everything was like on a great ascent until he showed up and everything was great with punk for a while, but look at it now. Look at the decline after brawl out and everything that happened there and all of the issues that happened when he came back. And I mean, you know, the, the whole idea that he was at that scrum, the famous scrum where I would just like to note that the scrum began with him calling out Nick Houseman for being friends with Colt Cabana because he'd heard something which ended up being wrong. And then I didn't even know this till yesterday. Somebody on the uh, the board actually went in, went back and, and listened and everything. Punk came after me. He was angry that I had said that it was unprofessional for him to, uh, I don't even remember what it was, say say something about a hangman, and, and he was all angry about that. And, you know, when he, when he brought it up, I was like, what are you talking about, dude? Like, what are you talking about? You either didn't listen or you got a clip sent to you out of context, which happens to me all the time. And then someone actually went back, and guess what? The person who actually made a comment about Punk being unprofessional was actually Vinny! I never even said anything! So that was another one. He was very angry about something that he'd heard secondhand or whatever, and he got really angry about it. And then, you know, he goes on and on about the whole Colt Cabana thing, which I've talked about a thousand times. I never heard anything from the Young Bucks about the Colt Cabana story, nothing. And, you know, the funny thing was, and I still don't have an answer to this question, okay? By the time everybody outside of AEW, was discussing this, okay? Everybody, everybody in AEW had heard this. Everybody. There was not, I I could bet you there wasn't one person in AEW who heard, hadn't heard the uh, the story about CM Punk and Colt Cabana and everything involving that, okay? By the time it, a word was breathed about it on any shows, Everybody in AEW knew about this. Why was CM Punk well, so insistent? Who, but hold on, but for those Hold on, here's my question. I just got one was, question. Though. I just got one question. Why was CM Punk so insistent that it must have been the EVPs that told Dave and I? When everybody there knew that story. Everybody there was talking about it. Why did he presume it must have been them? Well, what is the story for those people who don't know specifically when it comes to that case? Well, what it was, and this was exactly how I reported. I never said it happened. I said the reason that people are upset in AEW is they believe that when CM Punk showed up, Colt Cabana ended up being fired, and then the Young Bucks got him rehired in Ring of Honor. That was the story. Everybody in AEW heard heard the story. Everybody in AEW was talking about the story. Most everybody believed the story. I can't say everybody, but everybody had heard that before it was ever mentioned on anybody's podcast. But Punk, for whatever reason, presumed it must have been the Young Bucks that told Dave and I. I'll do exactly what Punk did on the show. But anyway, anyway, the, 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 the was question Colt was like, Cabana what? Fired? The question was, uh, what's the um, 
What's the uh, internal? What's your question? Was Was Colt Cabana fired? Was Colt Cabana reassigned? At, at 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 some point, like, where did that energy come from? And build to a point where Hangman did that on national TV. That still is a question that lingers out there. Because Punk is saying unequivocally he did not try to get him fired and was not fired. But that feeling was there. Is it possible that that feeling just kept manifesting itself into the point well, where the people issue worked was, themselves into a tizzy about The it? issue was everybody was talking about it. And the locker room was very much divided. And Tony Khan should have, forget whatever you said publicly, he should have called a meeting with the locker room and told them whether it happened or not. Bingo. And he goes and he back did to not. Tony Khan because he goes back to Tony Khan because if you're bringing in CM Punk and you feel as though he can't work with Cabana, so you're now going to move Cabana over here, like have enough balls and enough manhood to come up and say, I made this decision for this reason because I believe he can make us bank, do TV ratings, whatever it is. That never happened. And then we get this stuff where people get gassed up in their own heads, start bitching to each other, then start feeding stuff out there. Both sides of it do. And we end up with stuff like this, where we talk about AEW and everything that happens outside of the ring when we shouldn't be talking about what goes in on uh, in the ring. And that's been multiple times, whether it be MJF trying to do his work and all that nonsense, any of this stuff. It's, again, yeah, hopefully with this new structure, it is fixed. But it goes back every time to one guy. One guy. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Ellie Greenberg with Inside the Ropes magazine. What's up, Keith? This is a very historic night tonight, and there were a number of legends in the arena. Uh, were you able at some point to slow down enough to glean any knowledge or at least inspiration from those legends? So this honestly is, I hope I'm allowed to say it, but like, so I, I was like, ah, ah, back to those where doctors were like, all right, on the table, we'll just put some ice on your butt, and like, I was like laying on the table. Uh, and then like Ric Flair walked in and I was like, oh, and stood up and, I was like, yes. and he was just, and he said, uh, you are everything I've heard of and more. You are one of the best wrestlers in the world. And that coming from him is just like, thank you, Mr. Ric Flair. Thank you very much. Cause he's a standard. Like, I, I know, like, I, I know sometimes I like, get forgotten about, but like every like little bit of wrestling has some like inspiration from Ric Flair, man. So like, the fact that he was able to like just come over and just go like, you're the fucking man. It's like, man, amazing, like brilliant stuff. I'm a bit of a two-parter. Uh, Tony, you were present for a pretty crazy match that Will had a couple weeks ago. I'm interested to hear like what goes through your mind when somebody who you've already invested in is having a, a, a match like that, which is incredible, but also uh, risky and Will. When we had spoke prior, you, you communicated how important it was for you to still be able to live in the UK. Uh, how important was that to coming here, and, and what kind of schedule will you be on moving forward? Well, I, I was a tremendous match. That was an amazing, amazing, amazing match for Will to finish up in Rev Pro. And after a great run in New Japan Rev Pro, I thought Will versus Michael Oku was a great match. And I was really blown away, not only by the quality of the wrestling, but also uh really the quality of people i got to meet will osprey's family for the first time which was really cool the, so sweet dude. you're the man and uh the the great things he said afterwards it was just really kind and uh i thought the way he helped uh really set up his debut in AEW and also paid tribute to the great fans in the uk that helped him get to this place it was really a great thing and it was great to be there and of course the match took a big toll, I think, physically, but knowing it's Will Ospreay, you know, I had a high confidence he was going to be here, be ready for Revolution, and uh, he was everything we would have expected. The match was everything we would have expected. I thought Ospreay versus Takeshi had delivered, Revolution delivered, and again, I think Will Ospreay in AEW fits like a glove, as you're seeing here tonight uh, firsthand. Thank you, Sean. I'm basically Wolverine, bro, but I'll be fine in like a couple <laughs> days. Just heal up.
Can't believe I spent a whole day on CM Punk, and I didn't get to talk about how awesome Ricochet and Ivar was on Raw last night. They stole the show, and they had their WrestleMania. It was awesome. I know how to make you feel better. And the main event, Rockin' Roman Reigns whipping. Rockin' Roman Reigns. They whipped new Cody and Seth like dogs. That's what they did. Don't do that to your dog. And, now, if you uh, got a redheaded stepchild, that's okay. But leave the dogs alone. I mean, crying out loud. Crying out loud. That's what Cody was doing. Oh, and man. Seth. They took a beating. <laughs> yeah, they did. I can make you feel better, though, boss. Well, how's that? Because coming up here in a little bit, 4.30 p.m. Eastern time, Big E is hosting it. It's on Peacock. It is a Philadelphia cheesesteak and pizza eating contest between Omas and Otis. Oh, my God. And who is the uh, referee? Big E. If you want to talk about meat madness, it's coming up in a half hour, everybody. I hope nobody's putting money on Omas. I need you to think big guy like that. He's got to eat. I'm sure he eats a lot, but I got to go with Otis. Brother, let me tell you. I used to go to Skipper's All You Can Eat when I was a kid. I out ate everybody, including my friend Chris Johansson, who was so tall that his nickname in the YWF, his, his, his gimmick name was Redwood. He was he was like six seven, flaming red hair, and uh, we called him Redwood. I out ate that guy like nobody's business. So ain't no way Omas is beating Otis in this eating contest. You kidding me? Anyway, we're out of here. Hey, thanks for lis- listening, everybody. Punk, if you're listening, leave me alone. Wasn't that his argument at the end? I don't care what you believe. Just leave me alone. No more Instagram stories. I got things to do, brother. Including the Brian and Vinny and Granny and Craig and Sean show tonight. That'll be fun. But uh, we're out of here. We'll talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live. F4WOnline.com slash Vegas. Mm -hmm. That is F4WOnline.com slash Vegas. The annual convention is coming to, yes, Las Vegas. (gasps) It is taking place over Double or Nothing weekend. And Double or Nothing has now been confirmed for that weekend. The weekend of May 24 through 27, 2024 in Las Vegas. And we are going to be there. Who is we? Well, no Dave this year. But I will be there. Vinny will be there. Yes, sir. Uh, JJ here says he's going to be there on the chat. Our old friend JJ. A lot of people are going to be there. And we've got a lot of events. And if you're thinking of going to Vegas for the convention, you should go. It's awesome. We have people that went to the convention in like 2006. And they have made friends for life they are still friends with today you're gonna have a good time you're in vegas you're hanging out with people from this site everybody hangs out together has a great time it's like it's pretty much impossible to not have a good time i think there was once a guy who didn't have a good time that's the rumor but uh in general you know aside from that guy everyone's always had a great time here is the full schedule of events at 4wonline.com slash vegas Friday, May 24th, we have the F4W Dinner, Texas Day, Brazil. All-you-can-eat steak, sodas, tea, and dessert. You have to buy your own alcohol for this one. But that is, that's my highlight, to be honest. Then Saturday, May 25th, uh, there is a meet and greet with Vinny and I, Mm -hmm. followed by, it says a live Q&A, but you know what it is, everybody? It's a live Brian and Vinny show. We'll answer your questions. We can do a Q&A. We can talk about old wrestling. We can talk about stuff we've reviewed in the past. You can ask if any questions about whatever. Same with me. And uh, and by the way, yes, there are pork chops at uh, Texas Day Brazil. How about I can that? Confirm, yes. Yeah. But this, this is going to be a lot of fun, this Q&A. We've got uh, Ed's Pote Air Show on May 25th, Saturday as well. Mm-hmm. And then in the evening, there will be an F4W Sweet Party which Vinny and I will also be making an appearance at. 
Sunday, there's the F4W Brunch at the Wicked Spoon in the Cosmo. And uh, tickets for all of these events are limited. And we have added something very special. If you do want to go to everything, if you would like to go to the Q&A, the meet and greet, and also sit in our section with Vinny and I at Double or Nothing, you can get a combo pack and there's only a few left, so if you want that, you got to go like ASAP. A double or nothing ticket, the meet and greet, and the Q&A with Vinny and I. It's a special package. There's only a few left. We also have packages, the meet and greet, the Q&A, and the wrestling show, Ed's wrestling show. And, of course, tickets for the Texas Day Brazil dinner, sweet party, and the brunch. So I recommend you guys go. I've always had a fun time. It's probably my favorite time of year, pretty much every year. Bro, if Vinny, yeah. if Vinny has a good time. Yes. I'm happy. You'll see, if you go, yes. you'll see me smiling and being yeah. friendly.